Hi guys, so this is an odd video to film but I want to sit down and try and kind of give you some sort of support I guess and reassurance or I don't know just give you something in this crazy time that we're all living through at the moment. Coronavirus is something that is on all of our minds, no one is immune to and we have to take very seriously. At the moment here in Iceland for whatever reason we are not on lockdown yet I'm I'm sure it will happen very soon. Ingemar, my husband, is in a healthcare position so he has to go to work. Mia's dag mama has been unwell, not related to this. I've been home with her. I think she's gone a bit stir crazy already, which is a little bit scary. <laughs> I've sent her back to play with her friends today and we will just take it day by day and discuss that as a family unit but we will obviously be playing it as safe as we possibly can. I work from home, I'm not necessarily out and about too often so I'm basically at home anyway. It's only really Ingemar that is potentially at risk here. It is a really scary situation and of course if anyone is in that situation where you're a healthcare worker, my heart goes out to you. But today I want to kind of just do a little bit of a chatty brain dump, so I'm sorry it's not really an organized thought process. As a stay at home, working from home mum, I wanna go through some of the things that I've been putting in place, thinking about and implementing for my business with this potential already happening recession. So let's get into it. The first thing is definitely to keep creating relevant, helpful information for your audience. Whether you're a blogger, vlogger, Instagrammer, whatever you do, make sure that your audience is getting information from you and it's relevant information. The last thing you want to do is create any kind of scaremongering and negativity around all of this. So if you can just put yourself out there, make sure they're still seeing you so that they feel comfortable and creating any kind of relevant information in your field that will be beneficial to your audience. The second thing is to provide more value in your community. So not just online, but offline as well. A pandemic is a very scary thing for anyone. Whether you're in a family unit, you're on your own, you're elderly, do your part to help any of your neighbors, especially if they're elderly. Pop a note through the door, offer to pick up some shopping for them, put your phone number on it and just say if they want to have a chat, feel lonely, whatever, give them a call or try and get their number from them as well. Online, your audience probably values you and trusts and respects your opinions, your advice, your input. So use that wisely and try to reassure them in this situation. Spread love and support, not worry and fear. Give relevant information, help them out with projects that they can do around the house. Easy meal planning, books to read or articles to read online. Send them some videos that you've been loving. Send them Pinterest ideas of things to do with their kids. Make lists of TED Talks or Netflix things to watch. Netflix is gonna go crazy, isn't it? This is actually a time that you can reflect on your business, on yourself, the structure of your business, and the different streams of income that you actually have. Right now, we are leading into a recession. Job security, clients, customers, that's very easy to spend time and energy worrying about. If you currently have clients and customers, your number one goal is to make sure that they're satisfied and that you're treating them well. You deliver on all of your responsibilities and you go above and beyond that because you wanna make sure they feel valued and that they are happy with the service so they come back for more. Don't get distracted by this situation. Yes, it's scary. We don't know how long this is gonna go on for and we don't know how bad it's gonna get. You will possibly also be affected by this virus. So just have that in the back of your mind in a really small place. Try not to get negative about it, but be prepared. People are also feeling very vulnerable. They're definitely going to be pulling the strings of their purses really tight and not spending money. So things like physical products, they might not necessarily be investing in them as much as they would have a month ago. Make sure that you are aware of how this will or how this potentially can affect your business and 
and start using this time now to diversify and think of new streams of income for your business. That could be things like passive income. Now the online teaching community is growing every single day and it's a massive, massive investment of money. You want to try and tap into that wherever you can. If you have a skill or have any kind of experience that you feel is something that you could put out into the world, someone can benefit from, you can teach that skill to someone and there's an audience out there looking to learn from it and now is the time to create a curriculum to teach that skill to a whole new audience. This is what passive income is all about. It does take a long time to create that course and the content for it and the takeaways and the PDF bonuses and all that kind of thing. I'll maybe talk about this later if this is something you're interested in. For example, I have a course called the Portfolio Course, which teaches students how to create a portfolio to get into university for art and design subjects. This is something that I created two, three years ago now, and I have had up on my website or on Teachable for two, three years, and it's been making me money literally in my sleep. Invest the time, create the course now, upload it, market it, promote it to the right audience and it will just work away for you. That's the kind of thing you want to start thinking about, investing your time in and planning out now. The next thing is to focus on the back end of your business. So things like your website, your social media, all of the graphics that you use and your basic overall appearance online. It's really important. It's the face and brand of your company, of you. So make sure that you're upping that content. Everything is up to date. Things like CV, how many of us have done that recently? Your LinkedIn, things like Pinterest. Pinterest is a fabulous place to go for inspiration, but lots of people are also looking for your content on there. They might just not know that yet. If you are a blogger or online content creator, you have pinnable content on your website so that images can be pinned to Pinterest and shared with a whole other audience and it will just start naturally adding more views to your website and so you'll gain more traffic. Email lists. This is a massive thing to grow at the moment. I only really started implementing strategies to build my list a few months ago. I have a free library you can opt into, I have resources for students, but I also have an email list that I send out news about Iceland family life to. It's not something I spend a lot of time on because I have so many other things to juggle right now. At the moment I use MailerLite, which is a free program. They're really, really simple to build a newsletter on. Now is the time to grow that email list of yours. Your list is all of the emails from clients, customers, potential clients, customers, people who are interested in what you're doing. So as much as you might have been growing your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube channel, all of those people, those followers, they don't belong to you. The information isn't yours. It belongs to that app or software or website or whatever. If any of those programs go down and Instagram just isn't there anymore, those people are just lost to you. Growing your list is really, really important because those followers are the ones that you actually have a connection to and you can actually get in touch with them. The next thing is to go through all of the drafts in your blog post folder and finish them. I have a number of blog posts. I think there's a couple in there from like breastfeeding journey and all that kind of thing that I just never ever got around to finishing. And we stopped breastfeeding like 10, 11 months ago now. It would be a little bit odd to finish that blog post, but I think I might. I might just put them all up, get them done. And then my blog post draft folder will be empty and I will be on top of my workload. In all of this, I am really lucky as an entrepreneur or what am I, stay at home working mum. I am not hugely affected by this as of yet. I work from home. I'm quite often here with my baby girl anyway. We go out for walks. We're still able to do that. Everything I do is in this apartment. I don't really go out too much. I'm not necessarily missing too many social occasions or whatever. So I'm very lucky in that it hasn't really affected my business or myself too much. I know for a lot of people, this will be a, a real struggle and self isolation. Quarantined will be pretty tricky. And for couples, they've never normally worked together, worked from home. Um, maybe having to share a desk and have children running around on their feet, they have to homeschool. There's lots of different things that go into the scenario. Right now I'm seeing that it's not affecting me too much. I'm sure Ingmar and I will just 
kill each other. Um, <laughs> but those vlogs will be quite entertaining, won't they? It really could turn into a juggling act of looking after Mia and trying to get work done and being realistic about all of that as well. We have a freezer full of food. We have stocked up in a very realistic way. We've not gone too crazy. We haven't bought any new toilet rolls. We're trying to kind of plan out how we're going to do it and make sure that Mia will have lots of things to distract her by, educational things, not just Peppa Pig. I'm trying to come up with sensory activities for her and following lots of new Instagram accounts for mum life. I will link some in the down bar if you are also a mum or dad looking for that kind of thing. Some measures that I have been putting into place, thankfully, already have been the two new courses that I'm writing curriculum for right now. So that puts me a little bit ahead of the game there. I also have a new range of prints up in the shop. So if anyone is looking to support us in any way, we have the print shop. If there is anything that you want, we can send out to you whenever this is all gonna be over. But we also now have a range of Iceland Family Life merch for our YouTube channel. So if you would like to support us on any of that, please feel free to have a little look. I'll put some pictures up on the screen now so you can see what kind of products we have. I am definitely not an expert in any of this. This is all my opinions and the advice that I kind of just want to share with you. I have gone through a recession before. I went through the last recession just as I became a chartered architect. These things never ever happen at the right time of course. Right now it might be a, an incredibly bad time for you and your family and my heart goes out to you. It really does. Does. For us personally, we have had a number of months leading up to this where things have been pretty tight and we have had to really, really budget and we've learned a lot from that. So I feel like we're quite prepared going into this. Ingmar just landed a new job. So we're kind of in a strange situation where he will possibly finish this job in the next few weeks and we'll hopefully start the new job maybe starting it from home i don't know it might be a delayed start we just don't know we're kind of in a little bit of a scary place with that i'm sure we're not alone we have never really had it easy in our relationship finding out we're pregnant and we were also in a similar case like this. We're kind of used to this and we're pretty solid as a couple at facing challenges like this. It's hard to go through them, but it makes you stronger and it makes you understand your partner so much more. Yes, it's gonna be hard and you'll probably have heightened tension and your level of tolerance will waver. <laughs> but you'll get through this, we all will. We will be stronger for it. But in learning from this, I think we really need to start thinking about planning ahead, not just within your business, within your family, but also just about security, about security blankets. I like to call it a rainy day fund. I have a rainy day fund as a young mum. <laughs> Young. I have a fund just in case and this is kind of a, a little bit of a personal <laughs> subject just in case anything happens have some money if needed I'll just leave it there but we have a, a little bit of buffer as a family of emergency money that we do not touch in case there is an emergency like this kind of situation. So at the moment it's not emergency level, but we don't know where we're going in this. We don't know how long it's gonna go on for. If you have some money, really put it aside and be careful with it. Protect that money as emergency, rainy day, security blanket funding. These recessions do happen. They've happened before and they will happen again. Figure out what your costs are. So personally or as a family unit, whatever your situation is, Think about how much it costs you to live month by month. Put that money away. So start off with one month, build up to three months, build up to six months. That becomes your security blanket, your rainy day money. Don't touch it. Make sure that you're looking after yourself and your family. And if you can help others, then, then do that. We've got to be proactive instead of reactive. So try and figure out how you can best ride the wave of the recession and this coronavirus. Don't panic. Stay home, stay safe, look after each other, check in on elderly, family members, friends abroad. Use this time to FaceTime people and catch up with them. Invest in yourself, 
Think about your business, think about the streams of income, think about if you want to train yourself up in a new skill. Use this time on Skillshare. Look up videos on YouTube to learn a new skill. Take up vlogging, whatever. All I just wanted to say was we're here, we're gonna try and kind of carry on business as usual and vlog and share something to keep a little bit of entertainment going. Try and keep some normal normalcy in all of this and just sending you all lots of love and stay safe. Speak to you soon. Bye!